Hey folks, uh, looks like we are starting the second semester or so of Integrated Math 3. And here is arithmetic sequences. This is part one. Part two is the the application problems, the, the groovy uh, word problems. Okay. All right. And don't forget all you can find you can find all your lessons at that uh, groovy website. So what are some algebraic ways to define an arithmetic sequence? Okay, we'll discover that. Okay, so here we go. So, so a sequence, you guys, is just an an ordered list of numbers. For example, you guys, um, uh, this is um, uh, this one's going plus four, plus four, plus four, plus four. Notice there's commas in between them. Uh, if there's plus signs, you'll talk. We'll talk about that later. That those are called series. But if there's commas, they're called sequences. Okay, so this one's called an arithmetic sequence because we're doing we're adding four to each term right there. Okay, all right. So what about this one right here? This one looks like it goes um, minus seven. Yeah, minus seven, minus seven. So yeah, we're adding negative seven. So that one's also arithmetic. How about this one? Plus three, plus six. No, no, it's not the same. So how about this? Uh, three times two, six times two, twelve times two. Yeah, this one's this one's uh, geometric. That's uh, twelve point two. That's our geometric series right there. Okay, how about this one? Uh, one hundred twenty-eight. Um, can you see a relationship with one hundred twenty-eight and sixty-four, and then thirty-two? Yeah, they're halves. So times a half, times a half, times a half. Sixteen times a half is eight. So that's another geometric uh, sequence which is 12.2 that we'll talk about in a little bit. So sequences usually have some pattern, either adding the same amount. Uh, and so if you're adding, this text likes to, likes to call it D for common difference. Okay, and what they do is they do uh, right number minus left number. So 15 minus 13 or 13 minus 9 or 9 minus 5. They're all the same, 5 minus 1. Here's 17 minus 24, righty minus lefty, I call it. It's negative 7. 24 minus 31 is negative 7. If you can't see what D is, so I do I do righty minus lefty. 31 minus 38 is negative 7. Geometric, we'll talk about that later, okay? But that's, um, uh, or, okay, other sequences, uh, they might be multiplying or dividing by the same amount, okay? Uh, sometimes they square, like uh, uh, 1, and then 1 squared is 1, and then you go to 4. And then you go to 9 and 16, because that's 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. So 5 squared would be 25 or something. And then um, then we have sequences that are called uh, the Fibonacci sequence, or or something close to that. Okay, so, so when they're adding the successive terms, and that's later, you guys. We won't talk about that in, the, in this module. Okay, so here's some arithmetic sequences, you guys. So they graph straight lines, okay, and they either add or subtract the same number D. Okay, an explicit rule, which is uh, our rule that gives us our nth term, uh, defines the position of the term. So if we're looking for our tenth term, we can use our explicit rule, which is a formula I'm going to show you in just a second. Okay, a recursive rule defines the term in position uh, by n by relating one or more of the previous terms. So, so let's say we wanted to find the seventh term. We would need to know what the sixth term is, the previous term. Sometimes we need, need to know the sixth term and the fifth term. So that's a, what this means, one or more previous terms. Okay, so recursive means you need to know previous terms. Okay, so if we're going to find uh, the nth term, then we need to know what is n minus 1. All right, we'll talk about that. So here's some formulas, you guys. Okay, so in general, when your starting point is 0, and this book likes to start it at 0, and I went back and forth on whether I should use my old Algebra 2 formulas or not, and, and this book starts it at 0 so many times that I had to use their formula here. So anyways, it's all the same. So when it's starting at 0, the explicit rule, which tells us our nth term rule, like our 7th term, our 6th term, is this. So this would say f of 7 would equal the first term, plus d, d is our common difference, times n, which would be 7 in this case, okay, when n is greater than or equal to, to 0, okay. a is the starting point. You'll see in the next lesson I like to call it a sub 1 for the first term, okay, uh, but your book doesn't. I had a, uh, an old Algebra 2 book that called it t sub n, which is, uh, you know, our, our nth term. I liked that a little bit better, actually, but this book likes to call it a, whatever. 
So the first term is A and the common difference is D. Okay, we'll have a couple examples coming up. Okay, and the recursive rule, now notice we have F of N, which is this, F of N equals N, F of N minus one. Now F of N minus one is the term before F of N. Okay, so we need to know what f of n is. And so, so if it starts at zero, then f of zero equals whatever the first term is. Okay, don't worry. Well, we'll do um, a couple examples like this. And then, and then we start picking up when n is greater than or equal to zero. Now, sometimes it starts at one. So the explicit rule is, and this is the rule that our Algebra 2 book used forever, and they started it at not just one, at all terms, but it still works, you guys. But here we go. So um, uh, uh, when it starts at 1, notice this is greater than or equal to 1, and f of n equals a plus d times n minus 1. Notice this is just times n right here when it's 0. Okay? When n starts at 0, well, what's 1 minus 1? Well, that's 0. These are actually the same formulas, but when it starts at 1 right there, okay? And then the recursive rule is the exact same as the recursive rule up here. Okay, except that when we started at 1, we need to know the previous term, f of 1 equals a. Okay, don't worry, I have examples, I'll show you, okay. So, and then f of n is um, uh, the, the same formula right here, f of n minus 1, f of n minus 1 is the previous term, plus d, and then we started at 2. Okay, so here would be f of 2 minus 1 which is 1, so we need to know what f of 1 is, so that's what goes right here, plus d. All right, I'll show you guys. It's just they love to make it confusing, and it doesn't have to be. So use the table to write an explicit and recursive rule for each arithmetic sequence, okay? All right, so here we go. Now check it out. This one starts at 0, 0, and then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These always go up by 1s. And then what is it? It just tells us our position term. So it's, it's the zeroth term. This is the first term, the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term. Okay. So so check this out. This is going um, uh, from two plus three is five plus three plus three plus three. So so we need to check out. Make sure it's arithmetic. So righty minus lefty. So either seventeen minus fourteen or fourteen minus eleven. Just pick any two pairs and see what is, is it the same? Is it consistent? And if it is, then it is arithmetic. So D equals three. Can you see it goes plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. When we go to the right, if we go to the left, it goes minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three. Okay. Anyway. Um, okay. So the position number starts with zero. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and use these formulas right here. So A stands for the first term, which is two. Okay, and D is 3. That's how much we're adding every time. Okay, so that's our formula. So it's going to be 2 plus plus 3N right there. Okay, so there's our formula. And then always tell us where we're going from. It starts, N starts at 0, and it goes up to 5 right there. So, so from 0 to 5. So it could be 0, could be 5, so that's why it's less than or equal to. Okay, all right. And then so the recursive rule is this right here. So we always have to say f of 0 equals a, so here it's f of 0 equals 2, okay, and then and then just put in this, f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus d, well d equals 3, all right, and then so so that's it, and don't forget we got to start it at the next level up, so because we already know what f of 0 is, f of 0 equals 2, so we start, oh, we start at 1 more than, so 1 less than or equal to n less than or equal to 5, okay, now if this started at 1, then this would say f of 1 equals 2, and this would start at 2 to 5, okay? All right, I'll show you that right here, okay? So here we go. We got this guy. So we're starting this guy at 1, okay? So um, make sure it's arithmetic, so righty minus lefty. So you can pick any pair if you want, 9 minus 13, 13 minus 17, 17 minus 21, and make sure that they are uh, consistently adding the same amount. So, yeah, this is plus negative 4, plus negative 4, plus negative 4. Okay, and that's how you find D. So, here our first term is 29. D equals negative 4. And, and the position number, we started at 1. So, when it starts at 1, we're going to use um, this formula. So, F of N equals the first term plus D times N minus 1 for n greater than or equal to to 1 right there. And then the recursive rule 
And since we know the first term, the recursive rule starts with the next one up right there, okay? All right, so the explicit rule, there it is right there. And then I like to simplify this, you guys. So let's distribute the negative 4 through. So negative 4 times n, negative 4 times negative 1. We get that. And then let's go ahead and combine. 29 plus 4 is 33. So our, so our, um, our nth term, that's what this says right here. f of n represents our nth term equals this formula right here for n uh, 1 to 6. Now if I want, now if this formula stayed intact right there, we can find f of 50. Okay, and then instead of going, you know, uh, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, minus 4, out to the, the 50th term, whoops, I didn't catch that right there, this should say 5 right there, but if we wanted to go out to the 50th term right there, uh, we can just now use it in this formula. So f of 50 would be 33 minus 4 times 50, which will give us 33 minus 200, or what's that, negative 157, something like that. Okay. All right, so the recursive rule is you start with the first term. So the first term is f of 1 equals 29, and then f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus d, and then we start it at uh, greater than or equal to 2 because it's uh, greater than or equal to the first term that we're given right there, okay? So here, there's our formula, f of 1 equals 29, and since d is negative 4, we just plug, in, plug that in there for 2 less than or equal to n less than or equal to 6, okay? All right, so uh, let's write uh, the terms of the arithmetic uh, sequences and then graph, okay? So here, this is an arithmetic sequence right here. Uh, because we're going to add 2 to all the terms, you'll see in just a second. And here they want us to start at 0 and go to 4. So here's 0. So let's make a table right here. Let's go from 0 to 4 with a table right here. Okay, and we're going to plug in 2 times 0 minus 1, 2 times 1 minus 1, 2 times 2 minus 1, 2 times 3 minus 1, 2 times 4 minus 1. We're going to plug in 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 for n right there. Okay, so that's what that is right there. Okay, so when we plug that in, we get negative 1. Okay, so let's graph those, all right? So if I graph those, 0, negative 1 would be down here. Okay, 1, 1 would be 1, 1 would be right there. 2, 3 would be right there. Okay, so what happens is they graph a straight line. Okay, it's not asking you to connect them, so don't connect them, okay? Um, but uh, arithmetic sequences are always in a straight line, okay? Notice each term is 2 more than the next term. Plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2, plus this number right here, okay? As you get practicing with those, you'll recognize uh, arithmetics and, and geometrics, which is in, in module 12-2. All right, so uh, write the terms for the same thing uh, on this one. Okay, so here, this is a recursive rule. Whenever you see f of n minus 1 is a recursive rule. It, f of n minus 1, oops, that should, wait, we should put an f in there. My golly, this should have an f right there. An f, okay. Um, uh, f of n minus 1 is always the term before f of n. So, so f of n equals the term before that minus 2.5, okay? So we know what f of 1 is. Let's go ahead and make a table right here, okay? So, so here's our table. So we're going from, um, uh, we already know what f of 1 is, so we can go ahead and plug in 4 right there. f of 1 equals, equals 4. And then for all the rest of them, you guys, f of n, so f of 2 would be equal to f of 2 minus 1. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1. So we're going to go ahead and so let's go ahead and do that right there. Okay, so here let me let me explain that a little bit right here. So so f of two is f of uh, one minus two point five. F of three is f of two minus two point five because it's always f of n minus one. So notice these are one less than. This is one less than that. This is one less than that. So we're always using the term before that. So I can't find f of 2 until we know what f of 1 is. And so we do know what f of 1 is. f of 1 is 4. So this is going to be 4 minus 2.5. Okay, so when we plug that in, we get um, uh, uh, 3.75 right there. Okay, and then here's, uh, sorry, I forgot to show us that right there. Here's f of 1 equals 4. So go over 1 up 4. 
okay and then f of 2 is going to end up being 3.75 so we're going to go over 2 up 3.75 so here's 3 here's 4 here's 3.5 so 3.75 is right in the middle okay so to find f of 3 we needed to know what f of 2 is well since f of 2 now we know is 3.75 it's going to be 3.75 minus 0.25 okay which is 3.5 so f of 3 is going to be 3.5 okay remember they make nice straight lines arithmetic sequences always make straight lines now next lesson geometrics they don't but arithmetics they do okay so f of 4 says we need to find what f of 3 is because 4 minus 1 is 3 so now we know what f of 3 is it's 3.5 so 3.5 minus uh, 0.25 Okay, so that's going to give us 3.25. There that is, right there. F of 5 says we need to know what F of 4 is. Well, F of 4 is 3.25. So this is going to be 3.25 minus 0.25, which is just 3. Okay, so I had to extend that graph over just a little bit right there. Okay, all right, you guys. I hope that makes sense. And if you are in my class, that would be your assignment. Take care.